What's going on guys and welcome to another video. This is 10 things I wish I knew before I ran my first marathon. So before I dive too far into this video, I wanna first give you a background of my running history. I was never really a runner. I played sports growing up. Um, I did track in high school for like one year. I just did sprints. So distance running has never been my thing. I always hated running because usually in sports, running was used as punishment, so I always resented it. But about four years ago in 2018, I picked up running as a hobby. I started out just doing one, two miles every day for the first year, and then I slowly worked my way up, and I ran my first half marathon in February of 2021 in Greenville, South Carolina. I ran a 128, and then about two months later, I ran the Myrtle Beach half marathon, and ran a 129. So I was pretty happy with these first two races and my eventual goal was to run a sub three hour marathon. So in October of 2021, I signed up for my first full marathon, which was the BPN Go One More Marathon in Austin, Texas. And this race was January of 2022. So I created my own training plan. I trained for about six months and I ran a three hour and 54 second marathon, missing my goal of sub three by 54 seconds. Again, I was super happy with this result as one, it was my first marathon and two, I did all of my training on my own. So I was still very proud of this time, but I still wanted to hit that sub three. So the very next day I hired marathon coach Jeff Cunningham and I signed up for the Eugene Oregon Marathon which was in May of 2021. So for about 14 weeks I worked with Jeff. He got me dialed in, he got me in super good shape, he taught me a ton of stuff and I went to the Eugene Marathon in May and I ran a 258 which qualified me for the Boston Marathon. So after all these races, all this training, there's definitely some things I've learned and there's things that I wish I would have known before I started all of this. And so that is what this video is for you guys today. So let's dive into it. So the number one thing I wish I knew before running my first marathon was that consistency is key. When I first started running, I would run maybe two or three times a week. I would skip some weeks. I would just kind of do it whenever I felt like it. And I would see a little progress, but not a whole lot. And when I started working with Jeff, he made me realize that if you wanna be successful as a runner, you have to be consistent. You have to show up every single day. You don't have to crush every single workout. Like he says, it's better to be consistently good than occasionally great. And that is by far the number one thing I wish I knew before my first marathon. The second thing I wish I knew was about the three big marathon workouts. Now these are workouts that Jeff had me do during my second prep. These workouts are intended to simulate race day, to simulate a marathon. So it's an 18 mile workout, a 20 mile workout, and a 22 mile workout, all with marathon splits or faster built into them. If you wanna run a marathon without actually running a marathon, do one of these workouts because they are tough. But if you prepare properly and you show up to these workouts as if it were race day, you're gonna crush them and it is a huge confidence booster. All right, the third thing I wish I knew before my first marathon was the Nike vapor flies. How did I not know about these? These shoes are incredible. I don't wanna say it's all about the shoes, but when you run in these shoes, it kind of becomes all about the shoes. These shoes are crazy light, they're super comfortable, they propel you forward, they're super springy. Their slogan is that they make you, I think it's 4% faster or something like that. I swear it works. If you're running a marathon, I would definitely recommend either the Vapor Flies or the Alpha Flies. They are incredible shoes. Number four, electrolytes. If you're like me, you probably have heard that sodium is bad and you gotta have low sodium sauce and low sodium food and a low sodium diet. But if you're an athlete, that is the worst the worst piece of advice anybody could tell you. And I didn't know this for years. But finally, I learned that sodium and electrolytes are one of the most important parts of your marathon training. Our muscles need sodium to work and to contract. And when you're in a two or three hour marathon run, you're gonna go through that sodium quickly because you're sweating so much and you're working so hard. If you don't take sodium, you're gonna cramp, you're gonna bonk, and you're just not gonna have a good run. I would usually take minimum 1500 grams of sodium before those long runs. Um, on just a regular day, I would do about an extra 500 milligrams of sodium, but you gotta get more sodium in your diet. Number five, carb load. 
So leading up to my first marathon, I didn't carb load much. I, uh, I would eat a little bit of extra carbs, you know, like maybe a slice of bread or have pasta the night before or something like that. But for my second marathon, I went hard on the carbs. The race was on Sunday and I think on like Tuesday or Wednesday, I started carving up. I was doing, I don't know how many hundreds of grams of carbs per day. It was a lot. I was eating whole loaves of sourdough bread. I was eating pasta. I was eating oatmeal. I was eating so many carbs that I felt so bloated. And honestly, that is what you want. It's uh, It sounds counterintuitive, but if you show up race day, honestly feeling a little bit heavier and a little bit bloated because of all the carbs you consumed over the last couple of days, that means you did it right. In my opinion, that's how I felt. And I showed up race day and I crushed my race because when I'm 20 miles into that race, I would think back to all the carbs I ate and I'm like, I'm fine. I have hundreds of carbs in my body right now that I can re rely on for fuel. So you got a carb load. Before we dive any deeper into this video, I want to talk about one of my favorite performance apparel brands, Forces. Whether I'm in the gym, going for a run, or just hanging out with Bree, there is a very good chance that I am wearing Forces. So Forces is a performance brand based out of California, and not only do they make super high quality apparel, but they have an amazing community made up of inspiring individuals, athletes, and frontline workers who are all motivated to become stronger. All of their gear is made with the high performer in mind. That is why I love it so much. It is truly the best of the best when it comes to performance and athletic apparel. And another thing I love about Forces is their modern low profile design. Let me show you a few of my favorite pieces. These are probably my favorite overall. These are the Mercury Runner five inch shorts. They are super comfortable. They've got this nice built in liner. They're stretchy, they're lightweight, they're breathable. They've got this great zipper pocket back here. So if I go for a run, I can put my key fob in there, some gels. I love these shorts. I also love the trucker hats that they make. I'm wearing one right now. I love the look, just super clean. Love these hats. Trying to choose just one shirt that I like the most is difficult. I love the tech tee, which is what I'm wearing now, and the black one that I'm wearing in the video. And as far as graphic t-shirts, this is probably my favorite one that they make. It says faster than you with this rabbit. I love this one, this one is sweet. And then during the winter when it's colder out, I love the Ranger Crew. Again, super clean, super modern, low profile design, very high quality stuff. The tag right there, Forces, they do all their own manufacturing. I truly can't say enough good things about Forces and you guys know that I would never promote a product that I don't genuinely use and genuinely like. So go check them out, give it a try, forcesapparel.com. You can get free shipping on any order over $75. And if you use code JM15, you get 15% off your order. Not only do you get to save some money, but it helps me out. It helps me continue to make videos just like this one. So go check it out, forcesapparel.com, code JM15. Thanks again to Forces for sponsoring this video. All right, the sixth thing I wish I knew before running my first marathon is one that I talk about a lot and a lot of people talk about a lot, but still I see people suffering from it all the time. And that is running your easy runs too hard. You have to run your easy runs easy enough. Trust me, I did this for years before I finally learned to just slow down. And people always ask me, well, how do I know how slow to run? And there is no one answer. It's, it's very subjective to each person but there are two ways that I like to measure how hard I'm running. One is probably the best way, and that is using the MAF 180 method, and that is taking 180 minus your age to find your max aerobic heart rate. So for me, I'm 24 years old, so 180 minus 24 equals 156. So during my easy runs, my heart rate should not go over 156 beats per minute. What this does is it allows you to build an aerobic base without wrecking your legs and overtaxing your body. Most people, and I did this too, is they kind of run in this gray zone where they're not running hard enough to get anaerobic speed work benefits and they're not running easy enough to get aerobic benefits. It's kind of just this weird gray zone. But as soon as I started slowing down, I got so much faster. I know, again, it sounds counterintuitive, but trust me, it works. 
when I ran my sub three marathon, which is an average pace of about 645, 650 minute per mile pace, about 80% of the miles I ran during training were like a 930 minute per mile pace, almost three minutes slower. It doesn't make any sense, but trust me, it works. So slow down. Number seven, prioritizing recovery. This is one that I've always struggled with. I've always hated stretching. I live by the saying of, well, have you ever seen a lion stretch before it takes down a gazelle? Well, no, but we're not lions and we're not chasing down gazelles. We're running marathons. So you might not have to stretch before a run. I like to do a little bit of dynamic stretching. Following a run, I like to stretch out, sit on the floor, roll out my legs, use a Theragun, hop in the ice bath, use the sauna. Prioritizing recovery is so important. And something I like to say all the time is train hard and recover harder. Because the harder you recover, the harder you can train. It just, it makes too much sense to not do it. So you gotta recover. All right, number eight. This is also one that I talk about very frequently and that is adding in strength training at least two, if not three or four times per week during your marathon training. During my first marathon build for about six months, I didn't really lift at all and I kind of felt like shit all the time because I wasn't lifting, I was purely running. And during my second build, when I was working with Jeff, I added in a lot more strength training and I felt so much better. I could just tell that my joints were stronger, my muscles were stronger, I felt more powerful when I was running. And you don't have to go into the gym and lift a crazy amount of weight or do a ton of reps, just do some basic movements, even body weight stuff in your home can make a big difference. It's all about just building that resiliency and preventing injury by strengthening your joints, your ligaments, and just being strong overall. All right, the next one is knowing the course. So after you sign up for your race, go on the race website, figure out the details of the course. Look at the elevation map, look at how many hills there are, look at where the hills are at, figure out what the temperature is gonna be on race day. I know for me, I don't wanna show up race day and be surprised by anything. I wanna know all of these little details beforehand so that I can plan and I can show up race day and execute that plan. So do some research, figure out the details of the course. If you can even go run on the course and uh, just kind of get a feel for what you're gonna be going into. All right, the last and certainly but not least thing that I wish I knew before I ran my first marathon is to just have fun. Enjoy the experience as a whole. Enjoy the training, enjoy the research, enjoy the prep, all of these different things because in the end, that's what it's about. The race, yes, it's fun. You get to go out and, and see what you're made of, but really that's just the cherry on top. It's really about the experience as a whole. And uh, you know, it's, it's so cliche to say, but if you love the journey just as much as you love the destination, there's nothing better than that. You're gonna, you're gonna find happiness in that. You're gonna find enjoyment in the journey and the process. So I don't care if it's your first marathon or your 20th marathon, go out there, have fun, enjoy the process, go crush your race. I hope you all hit PRs and I hope you guys got something out of this video. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you to Forces for sponsoring this video. Go check out their awesome apparel. Make sure to use code JM15 for 15% off your order at forcesapparel.com. Thank you guys again, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.